Hello there, my name is Razo, and I want to welcome you to my channel. I'm the kind of guy that loves making characters as much as I enjoy playing D&D. In this video series, I plan to share some of my favorite builds that I have stored away. I hope you enjoy them as much as I do. A bow-wielding elf is iconic to almost every fantasy setting. I think everyone has an idea on how to play an archer that can kill their enemies from three rooms away as long as they have line of sight. Here is my spin on this classic build, the Deadeye. Alright, I've got D&D Beyond opened up and I'm ready to get to work. For this build, I like to have optional class features if your DM allows them. So make sure to select that bad boy. For our race, we are going to pick an elf. You can pick any kind of elf that you want, but it's very important that it is an elf. I'm going to go with a wood elf. I'm going to go with the wood elf. It gives us a little bit faster movement speed. 35 instead of 30. We don't particularly want to be in melee range, so this helps us get out if we need to. We also get Mark of the Wild, which lets us hide if we're lightly obscured by foliage, heavy rain, falling snow, mists, or other natural phenomena. You may or may not get mileage out of this, but hey, it's free, so you may as well take advantage of it. For our ability scores, I'm going to use the point by. I'm going to put a 10 in strength, a 15 in dexterity, which is bumped up to a 17 for being a wood elf, a 14 constitution, a 10 intelligence, a 13 wisdom, which is bumped up to a 14 because of wood elf, and a 10 charisma. Now, the important parts of this build is dexterity because it is our main stat for attacking with our bow. Constitution is important because it increases our health. And Wisdom is pretty good because we are going to be able to act as a scout in order to see things. And um, there is one other trick up my sleeve later on for Wisdom that's going to be pretty interesting and unique to this build. When it comes to the Strength, Intelligence, Charisma, you can do whatever you want with them. Move them around as you see fit. I like to put the three of them at 10. That way I don't have any negatives into my build. For the background, I'm going to go with... Bulk hero. You could also go with Outlander. There's not a huge difference. It just kind of depends on the flavor you want for your character. I find myself not picking Folk hero enough, so I've decided that's why I'm going to go with Folk hero this time. The important part is that it gives you survival. I find that it's pretty important to have somebody with survival in your group. And, you know, why not, why not us? We've got a decent wisdom. We're a ranger kind of character. It just fits what we're doing. For our first level, we are going to pick Fighter. And for our proficiencies, we are going to pick Acrobatics and Athletics. At first level, we gain a Fighting Style, and if you're using a bow, it'd be pretty silly not to pick Archery Fighting Style. This gives you a plus two to attack rolls with ranged weapons. We also gain Second Wind, which lets us Use a bonus action to regain number of hit points equal to 1d10 plus our fighter level. We can only use this once per long or short rest, but it's nice to have an ability to cure ourselves if we need to. Now for our second level, we are going to multi-class and pick up some levels in Rogue. Some people will say it's a cardinal sin, not taking 5 levels of fighter to get extra attack as soon as possible. But I believe with this character, taking the rogue levels is more important because it gets us out of melee. It helps us survive a little bit longer. So in my personal opinion, it is worth delaying the extra attack a few levels if it means we can make it there alive. By taking this level, we get proficiency in thieves tools and we get to pick up another skill. I'm going to go ahead and say stealth. We are officially the party scout. For Expertise, we are going to pick Perception, and your choice of Stealth or Thieves Tools, I'm personally going to pick Stealth. We also gain Sneak Attack, which means that if we hit an enemy when we have Advantage, or the enemy is engaged with one of our allies, we get to add some extra damage rolls, as long as we don't have disadvantage on our attack roll. For level 3, we're going to take a, another level of Rogue. This will get us cunning action. This is the reason I don't want to take the extra fighter levels right off the bat. In my opinion, having this disengage as a bonus action is very useful for a character that does not want to be in melee. Now the reason we don't want to be in melee is because we have disadvantage on attack rolls with our bow if we are engaged in an enemy. 
The other neat thing is when we disengage, our movement speed is 35 feet because we picked Wood Elf. The vast majority of people only have a movement speed of 30. So if they try and chase us, we can outpace them. Another thing you can try and do with cunning action is you can try and use that expertise in stealth and hide behind something as a bonus action and get advantage on your next attack roll if they don't see you. At level 4, we're going to take another level of fighter, and we're probably going to stay in fighter for a decent bit of time. At this level, we gain action surge. Starting at second level fighter, we can push ourselves beyond normal limits for a moment. On our turn, you can take one additional action. Once you use the feature, you can't use it again until you finish a short or a long rest. Basically, whenever we want to Nova, we can use our action surge and take another action. As our action gets better and better as we level up, this becomes even more potent. For our next level of fighter, we gain an archetype. And I'm going to go with the samurai. This gives us a bonus proficiency. We have to choose between history, insight, performance, or persuasion or get to choose a language. Insight's a decent choice, but I'm gonna go ahead and pick Persuasion because it's going to help us out later on. Now, if you've got a good party face, feel free to pick whatever you want. Really, this isn't very important to the build, but there are some synergies later on if you do pick Persuasion. Now, the main reason we pick Samurai is for Fighting Spirit. As a bonus action on our turn, we can give ourselves advantage on weapon attack rolls until the end of our current turn. When you do so, you gain 5 temporary HP, and this number increases as we get more levels in Fighter. We can use this feature 3 times and regain all expended uses when we finish a long rest. Now, I'm going to point out that this is a long rest ability. A lot of this build has short rest abilities. This might be the only one that only recharges on a long rest. And just like with Action Surge, as we get more attacks, this becomes even better. For our next three levels, we are going to go ahead and pick Fighter. For our first ability score increase, we are going to pick up a feat that is only available to the Elven races, and that is Elven Accuracy. We increase our dexterity by 1, bumping it to an 18. And whenever we have advantage on an attack roll using dexterity, intelligence, wisdom, or charisma, we can re-roll the die an extra time. So... Anytime we hide from our enemy and make an attack roll, we roll 3d20s and take the best out of the three. Anytime we use our samurai ability, Fighting Spirit, we get to use 3d20s instead of two. Keep in mind with Fighting Spirit, it's every single attack roll on the turn. On top of all that, whenever we have advantage, we get to stack on a little bit of sneak attack damage from our rogue levels. At Fighter 5, we get an extra attack, so we get to attack twice per turn, or four times if we action surge. At Fighter 6, we get another feat or ability score increase, and we are going to pick up Sharpshooter. Attacking at long range doesn't impose disadvantage on our ranged attack rolls. The ranged weapons ignore half cover and three quarters cover. And before making an attack with a ranged weapon you're proficient with, you can choose to take a minus 5 penalty on the attack roll. If the attack hits, we deal an extra 10 damage on the attack. Anytime you have advantage with this particular build, you should be using Sharpshooter. Because we are rolling 3d20s and taking the better result. We also get a plus 2 from our fighting style. We are going to hit very often, even with Sharpshooter. So anytime you have advantage, turn this on. In fact, I would leave this on on just about everything unless you know that you're fighting something that has a really high AC. For levels 9 and 10, we are going to add two more levels of Rogue. At this point, go to Optional Feature Manager and click Steady Aim if your DM allows it. As a bonus action, you can give yourself advantage on your next attack roll on the current turn. You can use this bonus action only if you haven't moved this turn. And after you use this bonus action, your speed becomes zero till the end of your next turn. This is basically a way for us to hide without using a stealth check. However, we give up all of our movement. And just like the hide, this works only on the first attack of the turn. Also gain an archetype. And we are going to pick up assassin 
This gives us some bonus proficiencies in Disguise Kit and Poisoner's Kit. I haven't found these to be horribly useful in my groups. But, you know, if you can make them work, go ahead. The main reason we chose this is for the Assassinate ability. We now have advantage on attack rolls against creatures that haven't taken a turn in combat yet. In addition, any hit you score against a creature that is surprised is a critical hit. These are two very separate things. Let's go over the first part. If we roll initiative and we go before our enemy goes, we automatically have an advantage on the attack rolls for that round. So what does that mean? Oh yeah, we get to roll 3d20s. Oh yeah, we're probably going to use sharpshooter. And oh yeah, a lot of things are probably going to die. Or the other part. We score critical hits any time we act in a surprise round. Well, that means that if we go through the effort of setting up a surprise round, we sneak up on somebody and we we ready an action to to shoot at something before they attack us, they don't know we're there, we automatically score critical hits. This doesn't happen nearly as often as the first part of this, but it's still pretty good if you can set it up. We also gain an ability score increase. Now you can go two ways with this. You can either bump your dexterity up to a 20, or you can take a feat called Alert. The Alert feat gives us 5 on our initiative rolls. We can't be surprised while we are conscious, and other creatures don't gain advantage on attack rolls against you as a result of being unseen by you. The important part is that plus 5 bonus to initiative. This lets us activate our Assassinate ability a little bit easier. Me personally, for now, I'm going to go with the plus two to dexterity because it also does increase our initiative check by one, not plus five, but at least by one, and it increases our attack rolls and our damage rolls and our sneak checks. So I think dexterity is more well-rounded and spoiler alert, alert is going to be the next feat on my list. For the next two levels, we're going to bump up Fighter to 8. That's going to let us add our Wisdom modifier to Charisma Persuasion checks. That is why I picked Persuasion earlier when we did our bonus proficiency. We also gain proficiency in Wisdom saving throws. That's a pretty sweet deal. At this point of our career, we have proficiency in Strength, Constitution, and Wisdom saving throws. We also have a 20 in Dexterity, so our saves are pretty good, except for Intelligence and Charisma, which if you put them at 10 is a plus 0 instead of a minus 1. We're also going to gain another feat, which I already told you is going to be Alert, but if you took Alert last time, go ahead and bump your Dexterity to 20 now. For the next 4 levels, we're going to pick Fighter. That's going to give us Indomitable. This lets us re-roll a saving throw that we fail. If you do so, we must use the new roll, and we can't use this feature again until we finish a long rest. So I guess that is a second ability that is tied to our long rest. I lied before. I am sorry. At level 10 fighter, we get Tireless Spirit. When we roll initiative and we have no fighting spirits remaining, we can regain one use. This lets us use at least one fighting spirit Every encounter starting off at level 14. At character level 15, we get another extra attack. That means on every attack action on our turn, we get three attacks. If you want to use your action surge, that's six attacks once per short rest. Keep in mind, if we're using our fighting spirit, that gives us advantage on every single one of those attack rolls on our turn. Now at 12th level fighter, we get another ability score increase, and we've pretty much picked up everything we need for this build to work properly. So feel free to pick whatever you want. Some of my suggestions are tough, lucky, or just boosting our constitution by two. Whatever you decide, have fun with it. Moving on, we are gonna take Rogue to finish off the rest of our career. Well, that is going to give us uncanny dodge which lets us use our reaction to half the damage whenever we are hit by an attack that we can see. 
We gain another expertise. You really just kind of pick your favorite here. I'm a big fan of athletics because we don't have a great strength score. And then either survival or thieves tools really kind of see where your campaign's going and make an educated decision. We get evasion, which helps us with our survivability. If we are subjected to an effect that allows us to make a dexterity saving throw to only take half damage. Instead, we take no damage if we succeed or half damage if we fail. For our capstone ability, we get a free feat. Pick your favorite. Once again, my personal selections would be tough, lucky, or boosting our constitution even more. Now to recap, this build is all about trying to get as many attacks as possible with advantage. When we have advantage, that lets us add our sneak attack dice, that also lets us use sharpshooter more reliably. We're going to be one of the more accurate high damage builds out there because of elven accuracy and because we are on a fighter base instead of a ranger or just a rogue by itself we get more attacks than we normally would thanks for checking out my channel i hope you visit more often don't forget to roll a nat 20 on the like and subscribe buttons and if you want to watch my friends and i play some D, &D check out this playlist see you next time